Yeah, but I don't have the right camera. What do, you, what do you mean? What phone do you have? I have the iPhone. Yo, that is the best thing to start with. I always tell people to believe that the best camera to start with is the one in your pocket, your phone. What? What do you mean? How? I got you. Let me show you some tips and tricks. Okay, let's go. I can't let you go. Cause I love you, baby. Can't let you go. If you're new here, my name is Desiree LeCap. AK La Capture, I'm a filmmaker and content creator sharing off tips, tricks, and hacks with you. But if you've been here before, I'm super grateful to have you back. I stay preaching about the best camera to start with if you're getting into videography or filmmaking or photography is the camera in your pocket, your phone. So in this video, I'll be sharing my tips on shooting cinematic smartphone videos. I'm using my iPhone 13 Pro Max and it is attached to my Sony a7S III as well. And not at all am I claiming that phones are just as good as actual cinema cameras, but to show you that if you know how to use a smartphone camera to its fullest potential, you can create stunning images that compete with these higher end cameras. A lot of people use apps that have more controlled settings for your aperture, your ISO, but in this case, we're just using the native app that the iPhone has. Starting with camera settings, whether you're using an iPhone, Samsung, whatever it is, I recommend that you set your resolution to 4K. With the bitrate turned up as high as it could go, meaning the higher the resolution, the better the quality of your video will be. Next setting is your frame rate. To better understand frame rate, it's the speed at which those images are shown or basically how fast you flip through the book. For example, Hollywood style movies are usually displayed at 24 frames per second since it's similar to how we see the world and creates a very cinematic look. And when it's a higher frame rate, it keeps the motion smooth and the details crisp. This allows you to capture things in slow motion. So anything like 60 frames per second or higher will allow you to film in slow-mo. Overall, the lower the frame rate, the more motion blur will be created and the higher the frame rate, the more clear and crisp it will be. By default, your phone will probably shoot at 30 frames per second. However, unless you're planning to do slow-mo, I recommend changing it to 24 frames per second. And if you don't have the option for 24 frames per second at 4K on the top left when you're changing it, just go to your settings on your phone, go into camera settings and then change it to 4K 24 frames per second. Now that we got camera settings out the way, it is important that you correct your exposure. Take the time before each shot to lock in a clean exposure where your subject and the background are evenly lit. In the native camera app on the iPhone, the best way to do this is by holding down on the brightest area and sliding the exposure to your liking. This is telling the iPhone to keep the exposure where we set it at instead of automatically changing when our subject moves. Another important thing when you're filming is the use of lighting. In this case, let's focus on natural lighting because we are outside using the beautiful sunlight and using it to our, our advantage. There's a dope trick to use to help place you or your subject under good lighting. Stick your hand out and notice when you're facing the sun, it's lit up evenly and pretty flat. When you're moving around or in a circle, you'll see how shadows begin to appear on your subject. So if you don't know where to place your subject for lighting, this is a great hack. Generally, during peak hours of the day is the most harshest time because the sun is at its peak and its brightest. So unless there's some clouds to help diffuse it or it's overcast, I suggest to film either early mornings or evenings as they call golden hour. There are tons of ways to take advantage of the natural light from the sun, but more importantly, as mentioned, take time to correctly expose your shots. Now that we've gone the camera settings and lighting down, let's focus on composition. I always, 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 no matter what I'm filming, whether it's a documentary, short film, music video, or my own personal stuff, there are three shots I always intentionally have in mind. Because prepared or not, going in blind, 
line, these three shots come in clutch, especially when creating a story in limited time or unprepared. So the first shot is a wide shot. This helps establish the environment of yours or your character's scene. It allows the audience to get a feel for where they're currently taking place. Regardless of camera movement or a static shot, you want to make sure to hold it for at least 5 to 10 seconds or longer if you'd like. This will really help you in post-production when you're trying to pick out the section of the clip. It just gives you more room to play with. Next up, medium shot. This is your standard conversational waist up framed shot. It represents the viewer's perspective from a conversational distance and in this case with the iPhone I'm sticking to the native 1x and framing myself up at a medium shot. So basically because I don't know the focal length on the iPhone's native camera app I'm just positioning myself or walking up until I am framed up at a medium shot. This also allows the audience to get a bit more detail of what your subject is doing. Lastly of the three shots is a close-up. So I'm using the 2x zoom on the phone this is the third shot I always keep in mind. It's either the 2X or you could zoom in a little more, but you'll probably lose a little bit more detail. The close-up, basically it fills the screen with part of the subject, such as a person's head or face or what they're doing. Because it's framed tightly, it creates and evokes emotions, helping the audience feel what the character in the video feels. All right, now that we have lighting, composition, tips out the way, let's talk about gear. I recommend if you're really wanting to smooth out your footage to invest in a mobile gimbal. If you're not ready, then handheld or static on a tripod is also the best way to learn. With the gimbal though, you're able to capture the environment differently or tracking a subject smoother. Lastly, shoot different perspectives. This is your opportunity to try something new. Basically shoot in any way you want or visually see while stepping out of the norm. It may feel like you have to stick to traditional shot types and angles, but play around with what you feel works best and you never know, you might be the next Wes Anderson. Overall, don't be afraid to try new things. Get crazy with your shots because that is how you learn what you like and what you don't like, what works and what doesn't work. It's really endless. You could try anything and everything and it'll probably look dope. All right, well, as always, I truly hope you took something away from this video and you go out and try to film anything and everything that you'd like. The thing I always say is continue being great, go out and create and have fun while you're doing it. I know it's very easy to overcomplicate things, especially if you're just starting out, but I promise you, rather than just sitting there and contemplating if you should do it, how you should do it, why you should do it, if the idea is good enough, just go out, do it, learn from it, and continue to grow. I'm excited for you and your journey as a videographer, filmmaker, photographer, content creator, whatever it is, continue being great, go out and create, and have fun while you're doing it. I'll see y'all at the next video. Peace.